with the Zeri banned yeah. away, do they feel like it's a complete necessity or will they go towards something else? There are Khan up and available as well. These are all very strong options. Jungle pool, largely untouched besides the Vi as well. So I feel like for EDG, yeah. they do have their hands full, but it's about what they want to prioritize. And pieces I'm looking for, obviously a lot of team fight, late game flanking, potential things like that for top side, but I'm looking for the trios that are going to be roaming around the map. Jungle, mid, and bot lane. Yes, I expect some late game carries to come out of ADC, but I'm expecting there to be a lot of mobility between those trios I just mentioned. We do get the Rook Han locked in from Aiko, so that does provide some of that mobility I was talking about, and that is when, you know, JJ, Fofo, and Mako look the best for EDGs, when they can have that cohesion. We maybe see a lack of cohesion here, though, as Zaya hovered right now for BLG. Yeah, trying to split up the Lovers duo makes sense. A lot of teams prioritize the 2v2 very, very highly, especially the level one is where I feel like the biggest danger point is if you ever end up uh, getting uh, W Don knocked up. The attack speed for both uh, of the partners there, it just makes the trade so oppressive. So BLG will snap that one up for Elk uh, and we'll see where exactly Leave goes to. I imagine he's going to default back to the Aphelios. Uh, this it's point. But for be. BLG, yeah, it's got to be right. I think for BLG, they can snap up their jungler or the Annie, of course, still up and available. But you know, you mentioned trios on the side of EDG. I feel like the trio for BLG a lot of the time is Bin, Shun, and Yagao, right? Having a very strong yeah. topside skirmish really does unlock this team and gives them a whole bunch of options, which I feel like other teams in the league don't typically get to utilize as heavily. But when you've got Bin in the top lane, it does make life a lot easier. Uh, but we did mention the Aphelios here for EDG yeah. and for Leave. It does feel like it makes back, the most sense, and I imagine a mid lane answer will also come through. I, I think that that is crucial. I think also on is going to be very, very big here. I think sometimes you've seen in late game, the team fight's not going necessarily his way, but I think a lot of the movement early on is important. But also here, the Yagao Annie, that was so crucial in their series against OMG. He was literally just flash tippering, making game deciding plays in those fights in multiple games. So this is also a nice little setup for BLG, but we do get that traditional Wukong for Jie Jie. Yeah, we do indeed. So what does Shun want to take here? Or do they feel like they want to go towards On's champion pool and then try and leave the jungle it's open. until later? I mean, the Kindred is open. I forgot. And they forgot about it. I'll, I'll no, be honest, they didn't Zell, forget about it. <laughs> I feel like it's just the hover. But even in what you're seeing right now from EDG, there's a lot of dives. This, so I, I, it's I, I think a it's hover, an man. Like, it's it's yeah. literally like a 90% ban yeah. against him. It, they, it is. Well, I guess he got through one and one against their series against JDG. <laughs> but it is incredible to see this man level up with the Kindred. He gets it in first game, giving him a lot of comfort here for Shun. But it needs to be a, a carry moment for him. It feels like a lot of eggs given to the basket of the jungler BLG. Yeah, and I feel like now immediately even things like, you know, we've seen the Annie kind of gravitate more towards the mid lane for Yagao and just generally across the world, it feels like Annie has turned more into a mid lane pick that flex pick. But now if you're EDG, you have to consider things like banning away the Galio just because like there is still the flexibility there. And we've seen what BLG will do with a Galio Kindred combo. And the answer yeah. is it's not very fun. And just having a Galio on the map as well also does enable Bin to have even stronger side lane duelists uh, up and available for very him. True. We'll see what the options are. Uh, though as right now EDG they are geared quite heavily into a lot of snap engage and I mean there's the respect you have to right you cannot let that combination go through even if the Annie ends up going mid in the first place now you're just making EDG burn these bands but it's a lot of snap engage and that's what Kindred definitely can thrive into so long as she doesn't get blown up before she can press the Lambda Spite and then you get the opportunity to return so much damage and there's so much burst already available yeah. to return after that Lambda Spite is actually finished up with his channel, right? The Feather pullback, yeah, Tippers and Andy just existing. It's going to be a very difficult thing for EDG to have to navigate around as BLG continues to just is. focus down the mid lane pool. And uh, I was a little bit off. It's 82% banned against uh, BLG. Uh -huh. Sorry, not, not, uh, in the not, playoffs not at far. least. Yeah, not that far off, you know, numbers and what do we say? Uh, Ari and Syndra, those bands, though, we do see that for your return ban, though, for Ben get, taking away a really big side lane threat against him. But that's the thing. I feel like no matter what you leave open, Ben will find a way. And we've seen him in games the last time around on the Jacks. And he's going to be picking it up here against Ala. Yeah, he will indeed. Bins, Jax, so scary. I think Arla is likely just to take this Gragas into the top side and just use it as a neutralizing pick. And also, I think just generally, when you're dealing with Lambs Respite, Gragas cast, the ultimate is just so powerful at trying to get as many enemy members off of that 
uh, invulnerability plate as possible. So I like this, not only in isolation against the Jax, but also into the composition of BLG. And I think at the very least, having one form of non-committal engage into tools like Lambdress Spy and also the Featherstorm just gives you a whole bunch of extra options on when you want to actually take yeah. fights. And I feel like that's the thing for EDG's composition right now. A lot of agency and when they actually want to turn around, when they want to make a fight happen. And I think speaking very of true. agency, something like Fofo's LeBlanc with things like Cinder and Ari removed off the table, do spell a lot of agency for themselves. It is, and it's giving some of that cohesion between those duos that, and trios that we were kind of loading to for both these two teams. But it is also a, a pretty big moment for Ala, who will have the Gragas, will have a lot of say in the spacing of team fights and trying to man mark at least Ben to some extent. We do get BLG's answer of the support in the Nautilus, so a lot more engaged there. And uh, I feel like we have a lot of that poke and prod that we'll see in the skirmishing in the early game to the mid game. Yeah, I think the mid game, things are really going to come online, right? Uh, one item for a lot of these champions, quite powerful, but two for the AD carries is where I think uh, we'll get a lot of explosive uh, action. I'm really curious to see how BLG want to play around specifically the first Herald, right? Because I think, to me, you've got a very strong skirmishing duo between the Kindred and the Annie, but on the opposite side for EDG, it's the exact same thing. So those first, you know, two objectives or so going to be a lot of say on how these two teams want to prioritize generally neutrals as a whole, yeah. but well, for this series. And here we go. Our game number one of our best of five elimination on the line, MSI on the line. It's BLG versus EDG, our fifth seed versus our second seed. And we'll see who comes out on top, who takes that leg up in game number one. Jayo's ring for what I think will likely be a fairly lengthy night. And I hope everyone expects the same thing. Neither of these two teams want to go out in a poor fashion. Crowd's lively Jie. tonight. I love it. Yeah, I like it. JJ forced to level up the Warrior Tricks, though, but you take that over uh, getting dredge lined and maybe even dying in that instance because Nagao was there with the stun ready to go. I don't think it's going to impact his clear too much as far as I'm aware. I think some Wukongs do actually take W first or second rather, not first. But look at this, BLG looking for information. Yeah, scrapping. Yeah, scrapping for a little bit of early vision there. I love it from BLG. Try to get some upending of the strategy of EDG because I think when you look at both these teams, BLG have a switch to flick. It's either facilitation shoot, Ooh. which is, you know, works, or it's the carry shoot, which right at this point they flick the switch. Where DJ is a lot more that facilitator, at least we've seen grow into this split, and it's worked out so well when they get the resources in the right direction. Yeah, it has. Certainly, I was thinking maybe Shun, because Shun was immediately dragging the red over towards the back of the Baron Pit. I was wondering if he was going to go for an immediate buff to buff invade, but it seems like it won't be the case. And actually, funnily enough, EDG have tracked that out. They've got a ward in the river to ensure that that yeah. won't go down that way. Kindred level 2, very, very powerful uh, at just kind of, well, <laughs> demolishing the enemy jungler a lot of the time. There's not often uh, potent sticking power as like we said, information was gained by BLG at that level one, and they do have that ward. So they know exactly where GHA is, and we'll see whether or not this changes Shun's pathing and decision making and exactly where he wants to try and attack on the map. But for now, mirrored uh, jungle paths in terms of just going from red to the opposite side of the jungle. Yeah. We got to see their first time play for Ala and, uh, on his Gragas. They answer into the 10 and 3 Jax for Bin. 4 and 1 on the Kindred for Shun. Pretty big, uh, went 3-0 and oh in uh, the split in regular season. Uh, now he's looking for a little bit of that aggressive invade Ooh. towards bottom side. No, we'll see if they can get well. a little bit of something. That's the dive. Yeah, it's a dive angle. They stack the wave, they've got the timer for it as well, and they know JJ is not on this side of the map. This is going to need a lot of execution here, but if they can set behind the bot lane of EDG, right. it's a big Ooh. moment of triumph. They can't do it, though. It will be uh, the ignite burn and the cleanse and ignite burn for EDG. Yeah, I think given the posturing of how BLG played that, they were trying to maybe bank that on would only take one tower shot, maybe. They were still kind of eyeing up, potentially re-diving, but on took two, and he doesn't have enough HP to re-tank on a potential re-dive. But still, two summoner spells, one, you take that from BLG, and you can already see where the aggressiveness is going to likely be from the side of BLG, trying to shut down EDG and leave on the bomb side as early as they possibly can. 
And I think we see the need for proactivity on both sides in different ways. Uh, I think Shun obviously needs to be proactive for his own right, get these marks up for himself, but as well as... Yep. Hey, it looks like he won the RNG, so you know, there you go. There's good something omen. going for you. Good, the good, omen. good omens. Uh, the, the sky is not red here. Uh, but we'll see if they can actually do anything with that proactivity, because on the other side, it is Popo who needs to get involved with JJ and needs to get this mid-game going for himself, because the LeBlanc needs to find an end. Yeah, definitely does. Now, Bin doesn't have Counter-Strike, but he does this have a little flash. bit of trouble. I need to burn that flash here in the end. Might save it. Doesn't wow. have that heal back. The Counter-Strike available. Not oh. going to flash, flash, Bin. Oh. The end. No, JJ. <laughs> That's a solo bolo for the best top player in the LPL, Bin. Oh, my God, Bin. I, the the cojones to turn around with Counter-Strike. It's all season long, baby. Oh, you got a bid for the cojones, it feels like, because this guy has been insane. Matchups that he feels like he should lose, he gets a, a dub in. Now we see 2v2 of the bot lane spurred by the early action of BLG. But incredible stuff, and that opening does so much for BLG on the rest of the map. God, Giga Bin. That's all it is, really, isn't it? Now on the bottom side, like you mentioned, did give uh, Elkon on a potential window to get quite aggressive into Mako and leave a little bit of a chunk taken out. For the very least, Mako does have sustain in the Rakan kit, but with the aggression, returns more aggression on the side of Shun, and now they're efficient. They're efficient as well. And they on. are. They got the He's angle there here as well. Flash on to leave. He's still got the dredge line as well. He's going to lock in Mako. And that's two quick kill. Three for PLG. They're off to the races here now, Yamada. Ah, they're not letting the pace hold up at all. First, it's the top side outplayed. Now it's this bottom side gank. Shun even gets a mark for it as well. This is a real nice setup at the end of the day, I have to say, from Ala, from JJ, but they just don't quite have the damage that last duo. And this is also why you pop your pots, but Bin goes back in with the counter strike. It then brings JJ back in. I oh think he may have had the crushing blow back up, but it's the creeps that finish him off after the additional tower shot. Down here, Mako does his best to try and you know, save his AD carries life, tries to give over his life. Maybe if that grand entrance comes in, the lockup finds Shun. Yeah. He gets to actually walk out, but it's just not enough. And they find That's two the kills thing, on the bottom side too. The flash from on to set up the dredge line on the other end of the minions. There was just no hope of getting out of the lockdown they had. And that's huge stuff for BLG. They definitely have a snowball to play around now. Gold separate across the team, it feels like. And you actually get see Mako moving towards mid. That trio starting to come online here. They're going to need to find an answer quick. They are. They are. <laughs> I think it's a lot of it is going to have to come from JJ from Fofo as a duo. A little bit of damage going to come down. Oh, I say a little bit. L just a little bit, right? <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> No, but that's scary. the crazy thing is when we came into this one, I was asking, you know, we saw when EDG didn't get the Zeri or the Aphelios last series against JDG, leave was down and out, it felt like. They got the Aphelios this time, but it's the map as a whole that's oh, kind wow. of crumbling so far. We'll see the double grab from down here and the pullback <laughs> leave stepping up to try to get some damage out of help, but he might have put himself in a precarious predicament here as the dredge line goes through the uprights. It'll be a calm as a storm down here on bottom side. Yeah, on finds himself that field goal with the dredge line. spotted out here. Just going to go back. And I think it's just going to prompt BLG to sit underneath the tower and maybe just kind of pump fake a reset for a second. But it's enough time to ensure that Fofo returns to the mid lane. In more cases than not, they clear out the wave super quick. And immediately that small little window of pressure we have in terms of that roam just dissipates all the information already had by BLG. Yeah, I'm just thinking about this, the, the potential step up there by Leave trying to get some damage on Elk. That is the thing about both these ADCs, though, is we've seen such aggression from them throughout the regular season, but as well as in these playoffs, especially Elk, even in the last series, stepping up a lot of time, playing very, very aggressively on the likes of the Aphelios. I'm interested how this Zaya plays for him because he's got a lot of safety with the rest of the team, but he's also got a lot of utility for the rest of the team. I think that's something for me that's standing out for PLG is they have so much lockdown. Yeah, they do, surprisingly. But I think it's kind of... I, I think it's going to be more based on how EDG try and approach the fights, right? I think, to me, there's, you know, uh, the big tool in my mind is the Gragas and how they're actually going to play around specifically the Lambda Spike mm. in those team fights. And I think the other thing is whether or not uh, BLG are in front of an objective first. I think that's going to be very, very crucial oh for now. <laughs> He's just, just whacking away. I think for now, 
uh, BLG have a lot of priority in a fair amount of the lanes. Hex flash is uh -oh. short. Uh -oh. I don't think uh -oh. On has an out here. There oh. is the turret over the wall. They've got the lockdown. Blast Cone gets out. He's trying to get the edge, but JJ gets on the board for EDG. Yeah, a little misstep there from On. Just feels like he can get the hex flash over the wall in time. Mucks it up, gets knocked up, just gets chased down. Now, the response of media, though, that's the thing from BLG. They have that Herald in pocket. They're already playing at it whilst that. A uh, little mistake was going on. JJ's going to try and take away the blue buff. Should be able to secure that one. Minus some shenanigans from Elk, but it won't happen. But it still feels like a bit of a consolation prize because the BLG, I think they'll take, you know, immediate golden flux with the Herald. Yeah. Over just losing one little pick before now. And that's where I'm looking next for the, the big Herald dropper shooting, especially when he's got so much strength from his top seven. Maybe ops in. There's a 20 CS lead. They've already got a kill up there as well. But you have the options to give out a lot of these resources. We'll see on get caught out here as well. Yeah, it's just I misstep. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he tried I guess he the didn't have the, the wall or not. Yeah, it's. I think he, I it think takes it was just a second a little, to charge the full distance, right? Yeah, I think he was just a little bit too far off the wall. Plus, like you know, like you said, there's that distance factor, so it just gets a little bit unfortunate, a little bit too short on the uh, on the hex flash. And EDG will find their man, and I think they'll live happy with that pick for now. But they need to turn it into more, right? I think that's the thing for BLG. Whenever they've found a pick or uh, a play so far, it's resulted in, you know, something going on on the map, right? Yeah. Uh, whether it's been the Dragon, whether it's been uh, the Herald, or even when Shun ganked the bomb side, regardless of it just being the two kills, it was also, you know, gang Shun further ahead in the scaling department just by getting the mark. So yeah. I think EDG needs to try and find something soon. Not like the game's over. We're only 10 minutes in. But I think, again, like you mentioned, it's got to come from the mid lane, likely, right? And GG looking around. I just did clear out There's the a seems. lot of hovering bot side right now towards this dragon. We've already seen the first dragon go to BLG. The thing is, EDG are typically the ones that are point and center for these objectives. We see, you know, already they are trying to get some vision here. Contest over this engage from BLG. They gotta be a little bit careful. On's getting engaged on so much. Soon getting low. That's the Lambsers fight down. On is gone. But here comes Elf with a lot of the damage. The Featherstorm aggressively. And Ben has arrived to get a kill himself. This is a big play. They're going to TP back over to top lane to cancel out all his push, but that's Dragon for BLG and a kill. Yeah, it should be that Dragon for BLG. Shun's on top of it, and it's just a really good roam timing from Bin. Gets the wave shoved in, opens out through the mid lane, and he knows he can teleport back to the top side so long as the fight is short and he's healthy enough. And he makes everything work. Gets the kill, gets the wave on the top side and secures his team Dragon. Excellent stuff from Bin and Ala. It's just too early in the game, really, to answer with a teleport. There is no Unleashed Teleport. And he wouldn't be able to respond in time. And straight to the bot lane. Straight to the bottom he, side of the Herald. He knows where the the resources. Go. Exactly. And it's just starting to go a little bit from bad to worse here for EDG. They've still got the engage options, though, so I won't write them off just yet. But this is a lot of gold to give over to three late game carries inside yeah. of a Jax, a Kindred, and Azaya. It starts off with the engaged the rotation is first from EDG, but the issue is as soon as Pin shows up and then eventually Elk as well through the bottom side, it just it's just too much for EDG to handle. They're not able to burst down a key target in time. Yeah. Sure they remove on, but it's not like they actually execute Shun or Bin or Elk and they're able to get the DPS out over time. And I, I know we were talking a little bit about mid-game when we were coming into the game, because I think that's where EDG specifically really come online. But it was still that question of needing Fofo to have some advantage, have some resources there on the blocker. You're going to feel like you don't have any in here against this composition from BLG, because as soon as you step up, you're getting CC'd down and taken out. So now I feel like the objectives are going to be a little bit more difficult for EDG to approach, but they definitely don't want to give BLG any more pressure around the map. So I, I'm looking for... A, a kick up in proactivity in the next couple minutes at least from EDG. Yeah, and they've got the tools, right? They've had them since level 6. Uh, got Cyclone. Divine Sunder on JJ at least, but that's a yeah. Gale Force complete for Elk. Yeah, exactly. Gale Force. Goodness me, every time I think about the item, I start to get a little bit mad, because it's broken, isn't it? Just, you know, giving champions not a lot of mobility What are you talking mobility. about? Giving uh, champions no, that don't no, have any dude. mobility and mobility it's... in a game where everybody else has mobility. Get you know what? Honestly, the haters about it. Honestly, do you know what else aside from the dash, which I think you ever is... played ADC? <laughs> you ever played ADC? Answer that question right now. Yeah, if you yes, have yes, not... actually, I have. Okay, fine. I, play, I played a lot of ADC many, Whatever, many years ago. <laughs> Pixar did happen. <laughs> Pixar did happen. Do you know what the most obnoxious part about it is? Before, and we'll get back to the game in a second. I just have to get my Gale Force Lander out there first. 
why does it have magic damage execution which scales off AD? Tell me. <laughs> why? Why does That's it do that? Question. It's, it's, it's really, question. really bizarre. If it at least dealt physical damage, I'd be like, yeah, sure, okay. I mean, it's broken, but at least it doesn't change the damage profile. Anyway, Gale Force Lander over. Uh, <laughs> Soapbox taken out, and now we're back uh, to, to where we needed to be. Uh, again, though, EDG obviously presenting a lot of vision, a lot of control around this bot side river, and that is exactly their bread and butter. That is exactly setting up for this dragon in 2 minutes and 15 seconds, where BLG playing a little bit more loosey-goosey. They'll be arriving a little bit later because they do have that strength to do so, right? They have the Kraken Slayer now completed for Shun, and they're already focused back on that bottom side to reclaim some of that. Yeah, exactly. They will do what they can to gain that land back. I think, you know, I was mentioning how the comps want to kind of work earlier on. I think for BLG, even though they'd maybe prefer to be on top of an objective first, they also kind of, I feel like they might not care. Both these teams eyeing up something around the bottom side. Shun, can get on top of JJ? Oh, can on close the gap? over here. My goodness, that crack and slayer damage does a lot. They're TPing wow. Yagao down here. Make huh. sure they can have a little bit of presence. Make sure EDG could not collapse around them. Yeah, they were concerned about Mako just kind of going all in there on top of JJ's engage. So Yigao gets called in and just having a threat of that fourth man. Even though Fofu was rotating down, just knowing that that turnaround burst could be quite potent and powerful. They refused to actually engage in that fight. And a lot of that was just pressure building from that tower being so low. And it is gained eventually by Elk. So BLG, again, continues to win out on the map for now. I think this next dragon is going to be kind of interesting to see whether or not EDG are concerned about contesting it, right? We're still so early in the game because the first dragon got picked up, I think, around six yeah. minutes in. So third dragon, by the time the 16, 17 this minute is, mark hits, uh, is real early. This is a Rift Herald fight to Bruin here, or at least a Rift Herald take from BLG. And uh, that'll be second for BLG. So they've had 100% neutral objective control. But we see pings from EDG. They've got about 35 seconds to set their boundaries down towards that dragon. Dude, we'll see what, what EDG can get done in trying to secure those battle lines. But I think for BLG, happy to just take the reset with the Herald for now and then make their way back down. Bin up here whilst they're panning over him. Already has the Divine Sunder up plus the Merc Tread. So he's feeling Ever pretty good. Frost for Allah though. I like it. Yeah, I mean, just anything you can do to slow down. Uh, not just been in the 1v1, but also just generally, I feel like Everfrost is such a strong item uh, on this champion when you need it. I think if you're able to find a massive body slam and then you extend that CT duration with an Everfrost, it just feels even more oppressive, right? Before you can actually get the cast clock down in as well. Look at we this. Said bout line trying to get a catch up beforehand. Oh my goodness. Fofo wow. is pumping out some damage now. As uh, able to get a poke down on on before the dragon spawns, that should mean that EG are able to flame this one. Help, do their best to get the start off at the very least. I feel like BLG should really be looking to try and contest this. Yeah, I mean, I kind of understand it because the control is so firmly inside of EDG's hands. Oh They're my finally God. here with the game. Yagao flashes. He can't get the dragon. He's locked up. CC Bin has arrived, but he's dicey. He hasn't decided if he wants to go in yet. But here now he comes with the concussion, and now it's on the lead. On gets the kill. They go right back on a shoot, but he pops the lambs just by it. Elk. He's able to stack up a lot of these feathers. Bin takes down all on the side, and they can't even get Shun. That's Elk with another kill, and BLG come out on top. They might lose the dragon, but they get three kills for one. Yagal's the only one that dies, and that's because he went in so early to set up the fight for the rest of the collapse from BLG. BLG went out heavy handedly. Bin is down here. I don't think he's going to be in much trouble because he's got on just shadowing him off in the wing, so he'll just walk away after collecting a little bit of a chunk on that tier two. And BLG, I mean, I, I do feel like it's a bit of a curious decision to not full-blown commit a little bit earlier, but I think it speaks more to the control that EDG had in the bottom side of the river at the time, plus on having to come out from base after being chunked. So a couple of things falling in place for EDG to secure this dragon and stop the snowball, but the engage from Yagao- That was the early cleanse there. Yeah, I mean, even though Yagao kind of sacrifices his life, it keeps EDG in a position for the collapse to actually come through. Flash depth, charge, flash. Counter strike as well to lock leave in place. He can't go anywhere. Real nice turnaround from JJ to actually force out a Lamtra spite on the top side. You would have thought maybe he would try and escape through the bottom side of the map, but just <laughs> kind of sees an angle and goes oh for goodness. it. So sad that he can't find the damage onto Shun. Makes but the thing is, is, as soon 
as that cleanse went down it was all in on to leave blg know exactly where the carry lies right now for edg you see that damage from bin that has been a constant all season long it feels like but especially these playoffs this man has really lived risen to another level and we'll see his top play well maybe uh he's not there get a little bit of love over to fofo and blg will be collapsing on now should be a yeah, little bit Fofo's of a tricky situation he's gonna try to flash get out but the timber stun is there not able to slow him down just yet but shoot wants another stack here and this will be his oh, fourth it's been applied. so it should be a big setup here they're gonna try to speed up but Fofo being a bit is there okay. been dying i just talked about him he got cast a curse the tp in the mid lane try to stop that tp but it does go through yagao makes it but the tower falls Shun able to finally get Fofo, does get that stack, and BLG trying to respond after their mid lane tower got taken out. Yeah, I like that from EDG. A little bit of snap judgment there. Whilst they see this pretty uh, pretty obscene chase from the side of BLG, you know why they're up there. They want the tower, and they don't even really get it because they focus on Fofo. So I feel like that's a fairly big win for EDG, but maybe in this turnaround, they're still going to get it in the extended, but. It was quite hilarious, I think. Did he end up getting it? Uh, I don't know if he got what? an uh, assist off of it, actually. Well, Shun has changed his mark over to leave. I guess that when might, the observers click on him. Yeah, I think, I think they, when, they when will, the observers click on him. They will eventually click on him. Uh, we got a pictured picture of that original fight, but now we'll see how Ben got caught out. Yeah, just steps a little bit too far forward. The CC like chain. Ooh. A little unnecessary, Don't look at the end of that. You know, you know. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just it didn't happen. That's cool. It's walk fine. away. Walk away. <laughs> uh, it's for the fireworks. You know, yeah. Aphelios really wants to be, you know, classy and give the fireworks at the moment. Uh, it is that turnaround though in mid lane. It is a catch out on Bin, which actually is super huge. Uh, and I do wonder exactly how they utilize this now. They've lost a lot of pressure around the map. They have no more outer towers for EDG. And there's going to need to continue to be these contests around the dragon, especially in about a minute and 10 seconds here. Yeah, I think, fortunately, BLG weren't winning so hard where sometimes you see those really, really insane games where a team just like completely stomps the other side. They take all the structure before Baron spawns. And then there's that brief kind of window where there's not really much coordination. A lot of teams don't often get to play such a wide map so early on. But I think the fact that the Baron's up and the Dragon is spawning at this time up should kind of give BLG a little more uh, direction now again. As I feel like maybe, you know, taken aback by that sequence of plays, it was a little bit disgruntled. But I think they will now focus their attention back towards the Dragon. They gave up the last one, I think, almost a little bit unnecessarily, but contextually it made sense with how things played out on getting chunked out and just generally being second to that bottom side, having secured the Herald now. They're winging this death rush, JJ. Oh, they will get a catch out here though. He does have his clone. A lot okay. of that preemptive damage going down there. Leave a stack it up to get to that Calibre Mala. A little bit caught out here. Now Elk in trouble against Fofo, but he's stacking up those feathers. The clone, or at least the Mimic. Now Yagao goes in over the wall. They've tried to find Lee, but they can't get him. Fofo picks up one. There's two down for BLG. Here comes the Lambs or Spite, but it's not enough at this point. They're going to try to flash out. Bam. The Chakrams are stacking. He tries to go in. It's a triple. And Elk will decimate a population. Population EDG with a quad. Elk turns on the burners and it's about the back end of that fight. All the members turn back around to deal with Bin who's found the turnaround on to leave but no one's hitting Elk as he pops the Feather Storm and just rips them to shreds. They'll get the dragon as well off the back of it. BLG just decimate EDG. It looked so good for a second as well. They were fighting inside that choke. We'll get a look at it now as it all starts off with this engage onto JJ. They try and find the pick. Death Charge actually gets Look at Elk over on the Warrior here, Trickster. But yeah, exactly. Elk untouched for so long. I think Arla was maybe looking for him, but then figures out he's not there. Throws out the cask. Forced to go back over the wall. But then it's about this engage inside the choke. Fighting in chokes often very difficult. And it just feels like they're getting kind of minced by so much extra damage. But on the back Look end, at all those no one is hitting Elk. And yeah, exactly. The feathers stack up. The Lampras fight buys a lot of time. The first pullback murders Arla. Goes in. <laughs> He oh kills the monkey and he's God. just able to get everyone because the focus is on bin that was a penta oh wait should that should have been a penta <laughs> that should have he just stole wow. that man's penta kill i you know i you know sometimes 
Sometimes you, you question mark ping your uh, teammates. Maybe there's a oh. question mark ping coming in now, but they're TPing in. BLG want this. EDG have realized that they are the prey. They are no longer the predators, and they need to run away. JJ goes down. Shun gets another kill, and the rest of the team will make it out. The sacrificial lamb has been given over to Billy Billy, but so will the Baron if they're not careful. Yeah, I think for that. BLG team fight that happened at the Dragon, that was the emboldenment that they needed to move forward. They find the pick onto JJ up in the top side. Bin again just finds Morty Man, Camel Strike, and it turns into a Baron off the back of it. And now this is where things start to look a little bit doom and gloom for EDG. Just because BLG right now, they're just working on so much momentum. As it's just that ward that maybe the spots vision, a couple man. more members, I imagine, yeah. as they rotate in. BLG's yeah, been so good picture. at vision. They have. They really, really have. I think uh, the the biggest thing for me, obviously, the vision control, the control around objectives have been huge for BLG. But man, Elk coming off of being probably the brightest spot, at least for me, on Ultra Prime last year, coming to BLG, yes, having a little bit of a rough and rowdy early part of the split. But this man has been super Saiyan in the playoffs, in the late season push. And he is somebody that they have been able to consistently rely on as soon as that 20 minute mark hits to be the carry, to be the big guns. And he's sitting at 6-0 and 6 in game one. Not bad. Not a bad opening game to go out into EDG against. I don't think anyone needs any reminders about what this game and series rather means. Spot in the finals, oh. rematch on. So just he it all there. up though. Look oh, oh. Mako has dipped out, but Leave gets caught out by the depth charge. That was connected onto Mako. The TP comes in from Ala. The dreads line will not connect. BLG oh. should back off. That could have been real awkward. Mako ate the depth charge, but then dashed all the way back to Leave and brought the knock up with him. Oh, which could have been devastating. Bo -bo. That's so close. The Gale Force had already been used, but Fofo is heading back to base with his tail between his legs. Yeah, manages to make it out alive, barely. Very fortunate, Cape that's three and a half. Leg? I don't know. Tail, tail between his legs? Cape? Yeah. There's no tail on the blog. <laughs> she, she's got like a, what, what's the, the thing she holds? Like a, like a giant cane? I, I don't know what the, well, you know, the staff. Uh, as now BLG, yeah. yeah, speaking of staff, void staff is completed for Fofo. Ooh, we, uh, we will see BLG continue to press up. They have another minute on this Baron here. They see a lot of pressure in mid and bot. This is the tried and true method of BLG once they have control around the map. We've seen it consistently from them here in the playoffs. We have just laying up the Baron. Bin can bring multiple members down. There's only 45 seconds left, so I don't know how much this Siege is actually going to grant them, but oh, dredge line. <laughs> a little bit of a sticky problem there. Bofo's gone. Yeah. And now you don't have that mid lane pressure. You don't have the attempt of the little block onto any backline members. That immediately sees all that control gone. And BLG are taking down a mid in him. They might take that Ala here who has to flash away. The jaws are closing quickly. Miagao says, let's go ahead and shaft those shut as that's huge for the engage. And now the follow-up onto JJ. Bid gets another kill for himself. And that'll be an in-hit going down here. Elk wants some more. And the Feather Storm has wrought just that to EDG. I asked only 30 seconds ago, how much could they really get from 40 seconds of a Baron? And the answer to that question is the bloody game. Everything. They're gonna take game number one. Uh, move up 1-0 in the series. We said the jaws close shot and it's a death roll. <laughs> My lead with him. Lambda Spy is gonna keep Fofo alive, but BLG will go one up in the series. A statement game number one from BLG. Now in the past we have seen them give up big leads. We've seen them have scrappy series, but this game. It was start to finish, BLG. They got those three kills early on. They were getting marks for Shun, and it was just a level up. Bin in the side lane on the Jacks. It feels like you cannot take away enough champions from this guy. And no matter what, even if Vary, even if Aphelios are taken from Elk, he has seen that he can be the carry on any of these late game carry picks, and even the Lucian in his last series. I think EDG are going to have a lot of questions to raise to themselves and maybe try to find a little bit of comfort going into game two. Yeah, and you know, uh, I think comfort may be key. And a lot of the times, especially when you see a team go 2 0 down, that's what you kind of call for in that game three. Obviously, though, when you lost the first game, but I think after the JDG series, it does make me they wonder. They need a win, man. They, they need you know, a win. They need a win. And it makes me wonder where their heads are going to be at. And it's why I, I kind of suggest maybe actually going to comfort 
ASAP because uh, and even even in thinking about this line of thought, they were on a lot of comfort across the board. So they were. It, it does they make were. you actually wonder whether or not that answer's already out of the out of the window. I, I think there needs to be the big thing on the chalkboard: figure mm. out bot lane. Because if you <laughs> cannot go toe to toe with Elk, you're not going to have a chance. And we yeah. said coming into this one that there is. A, a titanic monument in the finals of Ruler coming into his first split in the LPL. You know both these guys are going to want to give him another fight. And I yep. think that it's a point where Leave needs to find a way to enable this duo bot lane and find an advantage there. Yeah, and uh, I just feel like for EDG, in terms of trying to be a successful, you know, team fighting team in the mid game, it has to be... Uh, you know, set up for leave to actually have the resources in the early game, and it felt like BLG had a good read on that. So immediately we saw that level three dive <laughs> be set up, partly. right? Yeah, they they went for the level three dive, even though they didn't necessarily get you know kills or hell even flashes, right? It was just uh, you know the cleanse that was enough to then make a return play a couple of minutes later and pick up the two kills, whilst Bin was already individually winning on the top side through a pretty ballsy outplay. Uh, to be quite frank with you, but look at the damage, man, here. Yeah. This post-game breakdown, Elk, just so much. And I think just generally not focused down, if you allow Zai that much freedom, she's going to dish out the DPS like that. And exactly. I think the the bright point that they were able to pick out the Kindred here for Shun, but it wasn't this pick that was like, oh my god, this has to be banned next game. It Brings a lot of questions to the draft for EDG, honestly. And yeah. I'm very interested to see how they'll pick this apart, especially that BLG started on the red side. I do wonder what we get as a response here.